In this video, I will show you how you can install Arch Linux on a USB drive. And this will not be a sort of a live environment, this will be a full Linux installation on a USB drive, and that means that you can update the system and everything you do or change on the USB drive will be saved back to the drive. In previous videos I installed many Linux distributions on a USB drive, like Ubuntu, Manjaro, Linux Mint, Kali Linux, Pop! OS and DevOS, Chrome OS, and the list goes on and on, and I probably also covered your favorite distro. So for instance, if you're interested how to install Fedora on a USB drive, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Before we start with Arch Linux, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general, or short agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. Arch Linux is one of the hardest Linux distribution to install, where you actually need a guide how to do it, and I'm now here on the official installation guide of Arch Linux. You don't get a nice graphical interface, you just have your console, where you need to write a bunch of commands. And this makes things especially hard if you don't know what you're doing or if you're doing it the first time. That's why in this video we will go step by step and install Arch Linux. First we need to download the ISO, and here is the link. And then worldwide, this is the one. Download complete, here is the ISO. This is the ISO with the installer, and now we need to flash this one on a USB drive. And then we will use this USB drive to install Arch Linux on the same USB drive. In previous videos we always used two USB drives, one for the installer and one for the final installation. In this video we will use a single one, first for the installer and then we will overwrite this installer with the final installation. Honestly I was a bit surprised how it worked with a single USB drive on my side, so I will just assume that it will work on your side as well. But if for some reason this doesn't work for you, then try to install it on a second USB drive. In any case, the USB drive with the final installation should be a decent one and that means that it should have a decent read-write speed, otherwise the whole system will be very slow and you will get really frustrated, it doesn't matter if you have the newest machine, if the USB drive with the operating system is the bottleneck. So get a decent USB drive. In my case I'm using one with 128GB and you can find the referral link down in the description. Now with that said, let's flash this one on the USB drive and therefore we will use a tool called Rufus. This is Rufus, the official website, and I use this tool in almost every Linux installation video so far, so if you've been following me then you already know how this one works. Scroll down, click on the download link, download complete, let's open it, this is it. Now plug in the USB drive and I will do it as well. Rufus already recognized it, and now select the ISO. Here it is, open. Now I will leave everything else on default and click start. ISO image mode is ok. Now everything that is currently on the USB drive will be deleted, so if you have anything important on there, make a backup first. I don't have anything important on there, so I will just continue. And now let's wait. Finished, let's close it. The USB drive with the installer is now ready and now we need to boot into it. First make sure to disable secure boot, then plug in the USB drive, restart the system, and while the system is restarting you need to press one of the function keys, usually it's F11 or F12, it depends on your PC manufacturer, then you should get the boot menu, and inside the menu select the USB drive and it should boot into it. I will do the same on my machine as well, and I'll see you after the reboot. And here we are inside the Arch Linux installer, as you can see this is just a simple console. The first thing that we need to do here, we need to connect to the internet and I will use a wireless connection. As you can see up here in the description, it says that we should use the IWCTL utility. So I will first clear the screen and now write IWCTL. You can find those commands in the official guide and now write device list. Now as you can see I have one device that is powered on, station, the name of the device and scan. This will now scan for wireless networks. Station the device get networks. In my case it found one wireless network. Let's connect to it. Station name of the device connect and the name of the network enter. Now write the password. 
perfect, we are connected, and you can see it by this arrow indicator on the left side of the network name. Now let's exit out, Control c Now we can continue to follow the official guide, or there is an excellent utility that you can use that I very, very appreciate because it simplifies the whole installation process, and it's called Arch Install. Enter. This is it, and now we just need to fill out those fields. The first one, Arch Install Language, English, this is OK. Then Mirrors, let's go Enter, Enter again. Now here select the region where you want to download the packages from. I will choose, let's go with Germany, and back. This one is OK. Now this configuration, I will choose the default partition layout. And now here, select your USB drive. In my case, this is the one. And this is actually the USB drive that is running right now, and I will override this one, so enter. I want the main partition to be x 4 and since this is a USB drive, I don't want a separate home partition, so I will choose no. If you want to encrypt the USB drive, you can do it here, but I will skip it. The default bootloader is systemd boot, but if you want, you can change this one to grub for instance, but for this video I will continue with systemd boot. System D boot only works if your system supports UEFI, which my system does. It's more lightweight than Grub, so in theory this should make your system boot faster, maybe. This is not the first time that I mention System D in my videos. In a previous video I showed you how you can use System D inside a WSL Linux distribution. So if you are interested how System D works, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. So let's go with the defaults. Swap is default on, but for the USB drive we don't need swap, so no. Host name is OK. If you want you can set the root password. I will do it. And set up the user account. Add a user. This will be my username and the password. And this will be a sudo user, so yes. And confirm and exit. Profile is another important one. Profile. I want to install a desktop environment, so I will continue with desktop. As you can see, you have a lot of desktop environments here to choose from. I will go with GNOME, enter, and back, then audio. I will use Pipewire, kernels. In addition to the default kernel, I will also choose the Zen kernel, space, and enter. Additional packages. I will install NeoFetch, enter. Network configuration. If you are installing a desktop environment, then you need to choose Network Manager. Time zone is OK. Automatic time sync, also OK. No optional repositories. And install Arch Linux. Enter. Now this can take some time. Perfect, installation completed. And now it asks us if we want to ch root into the newly created installation. I will say no. Installation completed without any errors, you may now reboot. And that's what we will do, let's reboot and boot into this newly installed Arch Linux. Again, while the system is restarting, you need to open the boot menu and inside select the USB drive with the final installation. I will do the same on my machine as well, and I'll see you after the reboot. And here we are inside Arch Linux that is running from a USB drive. So we installed the GNOME desktop environment, let's see what we have. Terminal, and now let's try NeoFetch. So I'm running Arch Linux, kernel is 6.5, the Zen kernel, because I installed this variant. I'm running GNOME 44, and the memory consumption is about 1.5 gigabytes. And that's basically it, you can take this USB drive to basically any machine that supports UEFI, plug it in, and boot into Arch Linux. If you like the videos I make and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. You like gaming on Linux? Well then you cannot miss my previous Linux vs Windows gaming performance comparison video. So if you're interested which platform is better for gaming, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description.
That's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, you also have a super thanks down there where you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.